Well, it's uh, opening day of trout season here in Pennsylvania. And down here at the river axis on the Yakagani, and there's nobody here. Look at all this. This is awesome. So before I head up and start working uh, on the plat on the tent platform, I think I'm going to cast out a few times. Maybe a few times. Maybe a few more. I don't know. That current looks tasty. Yes. Well, it's a nice brown, but that's about as far as one can will, will get us. Um, not 100 square feet of coverage. <laughs> so, oh, well, I'll come back tomorrow with another can and we'll get this, we'll get this all fixed up and get a chip brush so we can get the other stuff. But yeah, it's an okay color. I like it. It's not as bright. It's not going to reflect as much uh, light, making it less, uh, less visible for people who are just walking around. That sound you're hearing is we are indeed burning brush. All the way down there. Big brush pile going up. Well, that's about it for all my scrap wood as well. Um, brush pile got burned out pretty good. Um, it looks like a lot, but really there's there's not. It's just taking up a lot of space. It's not very dense. Ooh, it's getting hot. All right, well, the fire's nice and, uh, and done. Watered it down with water from the creek. I decided to make a gate. It is terrible. It's awful, but I kind of like it. I used the most warped wood that we had that we're definitely not going to use for framing. Can't really use it for anything in the building, but uh, can I come up with something that opens and close, closes? Uh, sure can. Is it aesthetically pleasing? Fuck no. Absolutely not. But does it work? You bet. And let's see. It should work. Please, please let it work. Yep. Opens and closes. It's fine. Wide enough for the wheelbarrow for when we need truck stuff in. And uh, it'll be good. I'm going to use T-posts on the other side to connect the fencing when we start getting that done. But uh, yeah. yeah, little things at a time. Little terrible, terrible things at a time. All right, so one of the things that we had to do is measure out uh, exactly where we're going to put uh, the holes in the ground that we're going to use uh, for our foundation posts. So uh, what you just saw me doing was making sure that the distances were the same between the 10-foot and the 12-foot um, distance spans, I should say. Uh, yeah, and that's uh, once you check them by, by them being square, by measuring that diagonal distance, make sure that it's the same. Uh, start digging and it was not easy it was pretty awful <laughs> um, yeah the ground here is a is a mixture of clay lots of limestone and coal which is not fun to dig through not fun to dig through at all uh, but I'll be explaining that in this next video segment alrighty so I've done dug about two feet and I'm noticing that there's a lot of coal in here, crushed limestone and clay, and it's layered. Um, I know from records that this place was strip mined at some point, and it looks like they just put everything down, compacted it, and let the forest just take everything back over. So that's kind of what we're dealing with. Now, to get these into the ground, at a depth of three feet is going to be tremendous. It's a lot of effort. I don't want to break our backs. I do want to get this done, but it's almost not worth it. But we have lots and lots of four by fours on the Bristol Middle Pallets. I'm thinking that if we just do this with four by four supports, it's still zero cost other than getting the pallets here. Like we're not buying the wood and uh, it'll work. I'm going to talk to the fellas and we're going to see what's, what's next. All right, so we decided that we are going to use pressure treated four by fours notched so they can support the two by six by 12 uh, boards. Actually, I think they're like two by eight by, uh, by 12 foot boards, which is fine. Um, but we're going to use these non pressure treated ones as our template or as our guide. We'll make sure that our depth that we set for the gravel is correct. And that way that when we get the pressure treated lumber in, We'll be good to go. We're just going to trace them, cut them, set them in, and then start framing. 
So the gravel that we're using is actually from the creek bed uh, that, that's going alongside the property. So we've been using that gravel, as you probably saw us walking up and down with buckets, we're using that to line the, uh, the pathways. And we use that for the foundation because it drains really, really well. All right, so we just finished uh, digging all four holes. Oh, we're gonna deal with that uh, the beginning of the framing later on. But one thing I wanna show you guys that we didn't really talk about before is we are putting down that creek gravel down here. All the way through, a little bit at a time. It's not very deep, it's not very thick. But yeah, we're gonna get this graveled up as soon as it starts raining again it's going to reveal the nice nice little pebbles and it's going to be good this is still intact amazing but yeah it's coming along i can't really complain it's been a good day paul and calder were here helping out it's a good time gatorade and goldfish were had by all yeah and that's where the uh cabin's gonna be 10 by 12. it'll be all right <laughs> at least for right now it'll be fine we could always expand and make it bigger or longer it's all good anyways i'm gonna finish buttoning up thanks for stopping by everyone and uh we'll see you next week